you don't comment on it because we don't write a comment because we don't want to uh we don't want we want it to be anonymous so everyone will see your vote if you do a comment so go and submit a response like um i want to vote for number one one through nine or whatever okay so here's what we need to do first so people know and recognize what they're voting for let's create some quick titles for your submissions okay so um what happened where are you there you are okay so let's start ava can we start what's a good title for your film um or if you just yeah and you guys can help you guys can help her decide on a title too a good... wait what was it about though no that was his no. Yeah. Let's call it Mr. Black. No. Mr. Robot. Mr. Robot Black. No. <laughs> okay, so how are people going to recognize? So let's be a little bit, this won't be the actual title. We'll just be as descriptive as we can. So Mr. Flack the Robot, is that what you're talking about? That's perfect. Mr. Flack the Robot. Okay. All right, so that's one option. Number two, uh, Audrey, what do you want to call yours? Um, circuit circuit Freak. Circuit Freaks. Circuit Freaks. Circus Freaks. I love it. Does that, does that work? Is that descriptive enough? People will know what we're talking about. Because they're everyone's going to watch the videos again anyway, just to make sure that we have all the info. OK, uh, Janene, what do you want to call yours? Real loud. <laughs> How about mysterious camera? Okay. And, that, and again, it's not, this is just a working title. This is not even going to be an option for a title. We just want to be as descriptive as we can so people know what they're voting for. Mysterious camera story. Okay. All right. Gabe, what do you want to call yours? Um, Any um, suggestions? It was when Asher was, after. yeah, like oh, right. Asher was bullied and people were like, <laughs> yeah. make sure Asher was bullied. So sorry, you're cut. You I couldn't understand you. Real loud, what? Um, secret agent Asher. Okay, secret agent Asher. Okay, are you guys seeing what I'm typing? Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so Asher, what's what do you want to call yours? Uh, magical pawn shop. Oh yeah, what's a pawn shop? Um, I don't know. Yeah, let's do that. Magical pawn shop. Does that work? Sure. And and we don't want to confuse that with the mysterious camera. Magical pawn shop with Satan. Things like that. Oh, wait, no. Wait, what, what, like a demon? Magical demonic pawn shop. Okay. There was a demon who would like give you the power. I'm, it's my story. I'm going to do this so we don't, I'm going to do this so we don't confuse. Okay. So that way, when you're watching the videos, you can say, okay, that was Janae's. Okay. All right, Tommy, do you have a, uh, uh, Tommy's with us online too. Tommy, do you have a suggestion for your title? Um, you could do like a superhero science or something is fine. Okay, so like superhero science. All right, awesome. All right, and then I'm going to do Magical Shoe from Mars. <laughs> okay. 
All right, and then we got um, <laughs> then we got Annika's, which is the uh, slay the dragon or rescue the princess. Uh, princess dragon story on a, not a dragon princess although that could be a cool twist i guess all right and then we got um our uh Arte. barista spy right barista spy and this is this was all of us but we're gonna we're gonna call that alex's Okay. All right. So your mission. Uh, let, I'm going to change this due date to tomorrow night at before midnight. So you need to cast your vote before tomorrow night midnight so we can decide and have a decision on Thursday. Okay. So then on Thursday, we're going to do something cool together. We're going to do the next part of our script writing. And um, I, I was gonna watch a couple things today. We're just gonna watch a couple videos. And if for some reason it doesn't work to stream this and to do this with, with Zoom, I'm not, I'm not sure if it will or not. Let's test it. Can we just test it real quick? One second here. Let me get these videos up here. Um, Can you tell me if this comes through okay? Let's see this. Whoa. These ads, look at that. Are you able to hear that? No, no there's no audio. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, shoot. So you can't hear the, the audio from, oh, let, you know what? Let me uh, try a new share here. New share, share computer sound. Okay, see if you can hear this. Generally, uh, what I'll do is I'll start with the premise line. You can hear it and see it? Yeah. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to watch these videos. This is really, so basically it's really hard to write a script. Um, the, the hardest part in writing a script, and you guys probably have experienced this when you're writing stories and things like that. The hardest part is starting. Once you start, then it kind of flows easier and easier as you go. Okay. And you might get stumped here and there on where to go, but the hardest part is starting. It's sometimes really, you drive yourself crazy just starting. Um, staring at the blank page is the problem, okay? I keep looking up here because that's where the monitor is, but the camera's right here. So um, we're gonna watch just, just some suggestions on what people give, and then on Thursday, we're gonna try to do some of this together, okay? So uh, let me know if there's any glitches, but let's just, let's just start it here. Here we go. Can you take us through your outlining process? Sure. Um, generally, uh, what I'll do is I'll start with a premise line. You know, I'll write out a premise line, sort of, for basically for me, like the foundation of the of the script. A couple of sentences, take take you know, from start to finish, um, and then I'll expand that into I don't know, maybe two, three, four pages. There's sort of write it in sections. So I'll I'll divide it into into. Three, basically, if it's a movie, three movie acts, but you know, in, more in quarters. So it's like the equivalent of quarter, 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 which takes me through the four quarters or the three acts of the of the um, of the movie. Um, so it, it, it's it, I can keep it because one of the things that happens when you start writing it for me, anyway, when I start writing out and at writing an outline in in um, you know uh, uh, prose form, is that. You know, if you don't, if you don't, for me, if I don't kind of stop, you know, stop writing at a certain point, you know, you end up with, let's say your outline is four pages, you're writing it just outline of four pages. The first two pages may really only be the first quarter of your script because, you know, you, you know, you end up writing so much and then, then you have to really, then ultimately you end up with kind of, uh, you know, disproportionate, uh, disproportionate uh, acts. So basically I'm just trying to, to, to write it 
uh, as tightly as I can. And, you know, I'll write it long and then I'll, then I'll edit it. But in the end, I want to end up with kind of four relatively close uh, uh, descriptions of each quarter. Okay? So let's say that's, that ends up being three, four pages, whatever. Then if it's, on, if it's an assignment, then I'll, then I'll give it to the executive or whatever. I'll get notes on it, rework it. And then if it's not for me, I'll do the same thing for myself. And then what I do is I divide the, um, and this was a, you know, really I have to credit Writers Bootcamp for this because they really, this was kind of the way they taught me how to do it and how I always do it now and I taught other people and I, I think it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's one of those things that just sort of like, I, I don't think it's an, an uncommon way to do it, but it kind of boils it down to, I think, a really effective way of doing it. So this is, this is the key part of this video. Is it, is it coming through okay? It's probably a little choppy, but you can hear it, is it okay? Thumbs up, yeah? Okay, so listen to this part. So this is where we go from here. We have an idea, okay? But getting started on the script is, is a tough thing to do. But, and we're gonna see different versions of this as we go through, but let's keep listening. Doing it is that um, you divide, I divide it up into 12 sequences. Three sequences in the first act, six in the second act, and three in the third act of equal weight. So. So it's kind of like what we've already done. We've already divided it up into 12 parts of the hero's journey. So let's keep listening. Basically, you know, if you're writing a 120 page script or, you know, it's 10 pages a sequence. If you write, if you're more like a hundred page script, it's eight or nine pages a sequence. And I beat out the list of scenes. So I'll take, I, I turn, I create a, a sequence sentence. You know, so this is sequence one, two, and three. So out of that sequence sentence that I write, write out, pulled from the outline, the longer outline, I then write a list of the scenes that will comprise that, 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 that sequence. So I'll put like the scenes in a row, and then I'll figure out how many pages that scene will approximately be so that I can add it up, add up each sequence and say at the end, those six scenes will equal eight and a half pages or something. And it's an estimate. It may, sometimes I'm very off, but it's an estimate. Um, and this is just my kind of organized way of doing it, you know, and, and how I, I don't get lost in the process, you know, and how I really kind of stay on track. This is just mine. Everybody has their way of doing it. Um, and so I do that. So ultimately you end up with basically 12 series of, of, scene, of scene lists, so, and which should e ultimately, when you add it all up, should equal, you know, whatever your page, desired page count is 100, 105 pages, 120 pages, some, an estimate. Um, and so there's a, and the reason why we go for page counts is because there's a mathematical algorithm, which is not very difficult, that depending on how many pages your script is, you can give a rough estimate of how long your film is going to be. Okay. So I think he goes over that here, but, um, and it's, and it's not always exact, obviously, but you can get a good idea of how long your film is going to be by how long your script is. Okay. Um, so these sequences are very common. This is how we have worked in the past where we would get a sequence at a time. We do all the audio editing and the film scoring and everything like that. And then we put all those sequences together. And like I said, we've already got kind of an idea of sequences, but this is just another way to look at it. Besides the hero's journey method, now we're kind of translating it into what does a hero's journey have to do with film and how it translates to film. So let's keep listening. And then I take that, I put that onto my final draft, that list onto my final draft, and I create a slug line over each one. You know, interior, living room, night, exterior, you know, baseball field, day, whatever. And, and so I have the line, and then I, you know, the, the, what, the, what the scene is about, and then I have the slug line. So basically what I end up with is a whole written script, except without dialogue, essentially. Um, and then you go in and just you know, you craft it. And to me, it's just, it's a very step-by-step -step process. So it's like an accordion. You're constantly expanding that accordion until you have the whole script written. So it, that, 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 that works for me. Um, but everybody does it differently. What about writers who say they don't do outlines? They don't if they can do it, that's okay. more power to them. You know, I, everybody, you know, I, I look at like some of the Coen Brothers movies, you know, some of the great movies of our time, right? Amazing stories, incredible character, you know, incredibly creative. Oops. Those movies are not not all necessary. I don't know how they if they outline how they outline, but but they don't feel as specifically structured as most movies you see. Um, some are, some aren't. I think they take you know they just they're really brilliant. You know I think they're just able to you know they, they're able to infuse their stories in the, in their own world in their own structure. You know for example, 
I, if you can do it, it's great. I, I think I do, I've just seen too many writers who get lost in the process because they haven't sort of laid it out enough um, ahead, of, ahead of time. It, but again, it works for me. I, I, and I never look at it at any of this like, oh, it's, it's putting me in a box or I'm you know, using a formula. It's not at all. It's just, it's how I, I write. And especially when you're on a deadline and you, you, know, you have a limited amount of time to write something, it really helps me you know, uh, you know, move more quickly and, and, ha and give me a system of sort of checks and balances on my material. Um, and, and kind of force, and it helps me not overwrite as well and ultimately maybe spend, not, not lose too much time on, on any material that I'm not ultimately going to put in the script. So what's your nemesis when you're on hmm. a deadline? Uh, you know, changes, too many changes along the way, you know, uh, kind of any wholesale changes that, that may sort of crop up. Uh, you know, it's never a problem, you know, kind of all, just shifting something, rearranging something, changing dialogue, you know, uh, uh, threading something in. But sometimes there's that wholesale change, like the whole, you think something's working and that just whole concept is just not, it's just not playing. And you know it's not going to, you know it's not going to, um, it, it's not going to, in the end you're going to be found out and it's not going to work. So it, it's like lifting out a whole part and putting it aside and, and reconfiguring. And when you have to do that in the middle, it doesn't happen often. And again, I think if you've got a strong outline, and, uh, uh, and particularly if, if, it's, if it's an assignment where you're working with people and they're approving an outline and they, they're in agreement with what you've written, um, you kind of try to stick to pretty much what you, know, what you sold, essentially. Um, but yeah, too many changes on a, on a, uh, when, when there's a tight deadline can be really difficult. Unexpected changes. OK, so. Um, do you guys ever do that when you're watching a movie? I'm like, well, that doesn't, that doesn't line up. That's not very consistent. There's, you kind of find the loopholes in, in the movie. Um, that happens a lot and that's, a, and that's okay. That's normal. I mean, like, especially it happens a lot with like time travel movies or things like that, where you're like, oh, but couldn't he have just done this? Or why didn't he just do that? That would, that, can he just go back in time again? What's the deal? Is there a limit? You know, and so it's, there's always loopholes, but sometimes you have to sacrifice those loopholes for entertainment value. You know, Back to the Future, there's so many loopholes in that movie, but it's so fun and, and entertaining to watch. And no one comes out of that movie frustrated. Like, oh, that was a great movie, but there were so many loopholes. No, they're just like, that was so cool. So, um, there's gonna be loopholes in your outline, and that's why it's a good outline is gonna help you avoid a lot of those. And together, we're gonna do this as a class as well. So this next assignment is not an individual assignment. When we write our outline, it's gonna be a group project. So it's gonna be part of our short film group project. So the assignments that you'll be seeing now, you'll still get individual assignments, but the assignment, most of the assignments you'll be seeing now on your Schoology will be labeled short film dash blah, 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 okay? So right now we're still working on the script. We're working on that outline. So if you go, if we look at our Schoology page again, so what I've created, and this is just, oops, did I save that? Please tell me I saved that. That would be awesome if I saved that. Okay, I did save it. That's good. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is this is a, it's called a short film beat sheet outline. All right, and so we're gonna, let's watch another video. I'm gonna show you just a little, and he kind of goes more through the specifics of it. So that was just a nice point of if reference. If you're a there. writer of stories, you're So this is our next, our next one. Um, I want to make sure, could you hear that okay? And can you see it okay? Yes, thumbs up. Yes, okay. All right, so let's, let's watch this guy. This is, and he kind of gives us cool little, and I'll pause it once we get to the screen that demonstrates the, the different parts. But basically the premise of writing a story is you got a beginning, you got a middle, and you got an end, okay? 
So it's got to fit into those three overarching categories. But then within those categories, there's more. So this guy who we're going to listen to now goes into like, let's separate it into five-ish. So let's watch this. If you're a writer of stories, you're probably familiar with classical three-act structure. Predating the invention of toilet paper, this simple structure of beginning, middle, and end can be traced back to antiquity. These days, you'll likely see them labeled as setup, confrontation, and resolution. Okay, so these three things, beginning, middle, and end. Okay, this, these are fancy words for just beginning, middle, and end. And we've done this. We've done their setup, like describing the normal world and the hero's journey, 12-step process. Confrontation is the whole meat of it. And then resolution, like journey home, returning to normal type of thing. So same kind of issues. So let's keep listening. Some will throw in some plot points and pinch points, maybe break the second act in half to make it more manageable. Add in some squiggly lines for tension. Maybe in our world here, there lives a happy little mountain. Drop in a few more key elements and divisions for good measure. And soon we see what's supposed to be a simple structural paradigm is actually a lot more complex. But what if I told you that hidden underneath all of this, there's a much simpler structure at work. A universal pattern of character, actions, and goals unfolding inside of traditional three-act structure. In this video, we're going to outline these six actions and five turning points and learn how by aligning them with the unique actions your character undertakes in your story, you can easily create compelling and propulsive narratives. The content of this video is explained in greater detail in my book, The Story Structure Secret, Actions and Goals, on sale now. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to stay up to date on new structural videos. Most structural paradigms are built on the concept of acts, so before we can truly understand story structure, we should clearly establish exactly what an act is. In traditional three-act structure, an act is generally defined as something along the lines of a set of dramatic tasks or a unit of dramatic action. But for our definition to be quantitative, let's establish exactly what a dramatic action is. Since we know dramatic in this sense refers to a work of fiction and not some reality TV show, let's focus on the subject word, action. An action is defined as the process of doing something, typically to achieve an aim. And this definition is synonymous with the word act. So within a dramatic work, an act can be defined as the process of a character taking action to achieve a goal. Note this definition is composed of three identifiable elements, a character, an action they are undertaking, and a goal they hope to accomplish with that action. By breaking the definition down to this measurable level, we'll discover that there aren't three, but six universal character actions or acts intrinsic to modern stories. And these six acts are Act 1, dealing with an imperfect situation. It just isn't fair. Oh, Biggs is right. I'm never going to get out of here. Act 2, learning the rules of an unfamiliar situation. <laughs> Act 3, stumbling into the central conflict. Those were not normal projections. They've been trained for God's sake. Act 4, implementing a doomed plan. I told you to turn back. I thought we could make it. Act 5, Trying a long shot. How do you think the Mark 1 chess piece is going to hold up? The suit's at 48% power and falling sub. Act 6, living in a new situation. Newsflash, the nice landers are being nice to me. Notice that all of these things are actions. So do you guys see how that really lines up? Those six acts line up with the hero's journey. Okay, and so we're going to see a little outline here, and we'll pause it once we get to that image. Easily identifiable within a story, when you know what to look for. That's not to say that the traditional three acts are invalid or without purpose. Instead, they function more as dramatic phases through which the story progresses. Each of the dramatic phases... So this is cool. This is a great thing for you to have, and I did do a screenshot of this. So I'll, I might upload it to uh, this, I'll put it as a link or a file upload in this actual assignment so you can have this available. 
but see how there's still a beginning, middle, and end, setup, confrontation, and resolution. But under those, it's nice to get a little bit more detail. And even under those, you could do your 12-step hero's journey, okay? But this kind of makes it a little bit more simplified so you can, so we can effectively tell a story, making sure we address these six acts, okay? So let's keep watching. This is comprised of two acts and provide these acts with dramatic context. Acts one and two serve the dramatic function of setting up the story, introducing the characters, the story oh, situation, and establishing the rules of the story world. Acts 3 and 4 place focus on the confrontation between the protagonist and antagonistic forces as they come to head over mutually exclusive goals. And Acts 5 and 6 provide the resolution to the story where one side of the conflict proves victorious over the other. Going back to our definition of an act as the process of a character taking action to achieve a goal, we see that the action itself is only half of the equation. The character must also have a goal he hopes to accomplish by undertaking the action. Each of the first five acts culminate in a turning point where the character decides, or in rarer cases, has the decision made for him to pursue a new or updated goal. These five turning points are the dilemma you take the red pill and i show you how deep the rabbit hole goes the commitment he did die must have the deepest commitment will he finish what he begins i won't fail you the moment of truth you might have the rest of the team convinced to carry on with this job but they don't know the truth truth what truth the truth that Maul is bursting through your subconscious the newfound resolve Taruk is the baddest cat in the sky so why would he ever look up? And the final push. Don't worry, I got it under control. So the character's goal isn't static, but evolves throughout the story. This evolving goal follows the same six act progression. The six phases of the character's evolving goal are the initial goal. And if these new droids do work out, I want to transmit my application to the Academy this year. The transitional goal. I want you to Learn these savages from the inside. I want you to gain their trust. The false goal. Give me back my medal right now! <laughs> the penultimate goal. We need to find Peter now and get off this damn planet. The ultimate goal. What is he doing? He's beginning to believe. And success or failure. The conflict the character faces in this story arises from the outside opposition he faces to his evolving goal. As the story progresses, the stakes rise for the character as the opposition to his goal intensifies, and this progression aligns with the six acts. The six stages of opposition are oppressive opposition. But I was going into Toshi Station to pick up some power converters. You can waste time with your friends when your chores are done. Incidental opposition. Uh, Ocean, can I get a little help? Intentional opposition. Who do you think locked you out? I was the one who filed the injunction against you. Self-inflicted opposition. Who or what is Mr. Charles? It involves telling the mark that he's dreaming, which involves attracting a lot of attention to us. Ultimate opposition. Welcome to the boss level! And peace. Only a few were chosen to stay. In the next video, we'll examine in depth the elements of the first dramatic phase, the setup. Okay. So um, I just thought that was really helpful. Um, just a different way to look at this. Now, and we've got some stuff lined up. We've got some stuff written out, but it's nice to put it in these boxes. I mean, I'm, I, just, I just like organization and I like organizing it in a way that's easy for me to see and to read. And then once you have that nice outline, writing a script from there is a little bit easier. So I found this series um, that's basically these tutorials on how to um, write a script, okay? So from day one. So now we're at the part where we've got an idea and we've, we've got kind of a, a, a plot, but now we need to figure out how to outline it, okay? So here's one more. And then from here, there's some actual, there's some good, uh, a, 
So you can go back and watch the first few episodes of this, but this is really good. This is only three minutes, but from here what we'll do is I'm gonna show you the template that they provide, and then we're gonna do this together on Thursday, okay? So um, we'll have some time after this so we can talk through a little bit what that could look like, but let's just watch this video and then we'll talk. Welcome to Fundamentals, a learning series designed to help you take your script from idea to execution. Each episode will focus on the next step in the script development process and include a learning assignment to get the ball rolling. In the first three lessons, we guided you through your initial story development. Now, it's time to start structuring your plot with a script outline. Outlining your script gives you a step-by-step -step blueprint for your first draft. Typically, a feature-length screenplay is based on a three-act dramatic structure. These acts often go by different names, but let's keep things simple and just call them the beginning, the middle, and the end. Within the three acts, dramatic events are expected to occur. We call these events story beats. You're going to create a beat sheet. This is a document that lays out all of your story beats in order. When finished, this list of plot points will form your narrative. These don't need to be fleshed out scenes, just important moments written in jot note form. We've provided our own beat sheet template which you can download by clicking the link in the description. As you come up with your story beats, you should always consider how they fit into the three distinct acts. So, you have your beat sheet complete. Great job! You've laid the foundation for your plot, and it's finally time to start writing a script outline. Using your beat sheet as a guide, you can now start describing every scene in your story from beginning to end in short paragraphs that get right to the point. Here's an example of what a scene description might look like. Interior, police station, night. Our two detectives are clocking out after a hard night's work. Barnes notices Miller pocketing one of the photographs that's meant to be checked in. A heated argument ensues and ends with Miller giving Barnes a stern warning to keep quiet. Now it's time for your learning assignment. Complete your script outline, working from the beat sheet to expand each story beat into a scene description. Here's a fun way to train yourself to think in terms of structure. Pick a movie that you know and love. Think about when the shifts between acts are occurring in the story. You'll be surprised how quickly the structure of the movie becomes apparent. Once you have a completed script outline, you've reached a huge milestone, the end of your story development process. Congratulations, you're about to begin writing your actual script. And with that, you're ready to move on to our next lesson. Okay, so, um, I downloaded this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna open it up so you can see it. Actually, I'm gonna, Catch it to this first. Oh, and I was going to talk to you guys about Cami. I don't know if you guys have learned Cami or if you have Cami on your Google. Um, it's just an extension you can add to your Google account and you can complete assignments right on the PDF that's attached. So this is a PDF, um, but if I open it with Cami, here's what happens. So this is the template that I have. So what I can do is I can write directly onto here. So this is where I would write stuff. Okay, so this is cool. And then once you're done, you can turn it in type of thing. So we, we're not gonna have a lot of individual assignments like this, but if you're not familiar with Cami yet, check it out. You can use it as a Google extension. All right, um, so let's undo that. So we don't have our movie yet because we still need to vote on it, but I thought we could just start filling out the first couple of acts or couple of sections with our bubblegum idea that never went anywhere. So it, I mean, it's still a good plot. 
maybe sometime down the road we could uh, we could think about that movie. But let's take our bubblegum story idea, and we are going to try to fill out some of these uh, beats. Okay, so here's the first beat: Act One, establishment. This is where the general theme, tone, and setting of your story are introduced. Think of it as opening the door into the world that your characters are going to inhabit. Okay, so this is describing the normal world. We've done this when we did our hero's journey. So a lot of this work has already been done, okay? So what did we say? Um, we said um, our establishment. So uh, our main character was Gabe, right? Was that our main character? Of course, okay. Gabe. So, and, and Gabe is someone, uh, is a normal kid, a normal but picked on kid. Oh, I'm going to say normal kid, but he's only picked on by one bully. Everyone else thinks Gabe is cool, right? Normal kid is picked on by a bully. Let's call him, uh, I don't know, Asher. Oh, random. Yeah, that's random. I don't know. Oh, wait, your name's Asher. That's weird. Okay. Gabe, a normal kid is picked on by a bully, Asher, at school. So without going into too much detail, um, we can describe the details of Gabe and his life a little bit later in our script. But keep in mind, we are not writing a feature film. We're writing a short film. So like 20 minutes is the average short film. So we can, 20 minutes is probably pretty long too for what we're trying to do. So let's, let's keep it, Gabe, a normal kid is picked on by a bully, Asher, okay? So here's the second part. This is the establishment. Now set up an exposition. It's a good idea to introduce your protagonist, protagonist meaning the hero, which is Gabe, and, a, and secondary characters as soon as you can, all right? So let's see, um, can cast some light on their personalities, goals, vic, I mean, vices and virtues, making it clear what your characters, let me zoom in here so you can see it a little better. Making it clear what your characters want is key to keeping your story interesting, okay? So really, I should have done something different here. I should have put all this down here. So I can't really do that, but <laughs> I wonder if I can copy and paste. Wouldn't that be cool? No, I can't copy and paste. But I probably should have put that on here. So maybe we can say, um, we can say uh, Westville is a is a normal city in a normal world in a normal part of our country, type of thing. Okay, so that's that's more the establishment of the environment. Okay. Think of it as opening the door that your characters are going to inhabit, but we haven't introduced our characters yet. So really we should introduce our characters in this second part of act one, which is set up an exposition. So this is where we would say Gabe, a normal kid, um, dreams of, of being a hero, but is picked on by a bully named Asher, okay? That Asher, I just don't know what to think of him. Okay, so let's let's write that in our setup and exposition. So Gabe, a normal teenager, dreams of being a hero.
dreams of being a hero. So let's just stop there. He has a couple close friends. I think we talked about that when we were um, mapping out our story, right? A couple close friends. We're gonna say a love interest. But he is not quote unquote popular. Okay, and then we're going to say um, Asher, a school bully. Has targeted Gabe. As his current mission. <laughs> okay. So does that make sense? So we've introduced the characters and we've also introduced not just the characters, but who they are. And you automatically recognize Gabe as the protagonist and Asher as the jerk or the antagonist. Okay. All right. So act one, inciting incident. Every compelling story is about some kind of journey, but be it literal or figurative, internal or external, your first inciting incident is what starts your protagonist down that path. Generally, we get the first glimpse of the antagonist or villain around this point, okay? So in this case, this is like your call to adventure um, that we talked about in our hero's journey, right? So our call to adventure is what? Gabe buys gum from vending machine. Vending machine and realizes realizes that he sees the future every time he pops a bubble. Okay. So that was what we've already talked about that, but that's basically our inciting incident. The first time we see it, but it's also could be. Um, let me just see here. Okay, I did it wrong again. I'm sorry. This should have been down here. The turning point. Finally, an event, force, or decision puts the first act to bed and steers the story into conflict. This is where things start getting exciting. Okay, so maybe our inciting incident. I should have read through this a little bit more detail. Sorry. Our inciting incident is Asher um, um, there's a specific act of bulliness, right? Performs specific. We don't know what that is yet. We don't need to know. Performs an act of bullying. with the whole school school watching okay this is great because you need this to help establish those characters so so and the key sentence here is generally we get the first glimpse of the antagonist or villain around this point okay so this is where we see asher's character and we start the hating of Asher process, okay? Your goal is, as a writer, is to create that emotion the antag against the antagonist. So you want to try to develop a connection with the protagonist, and you do want to de develop this contemplation, 
this um, this emotion of uh, I don't like the antagonist. Okay, and that's okay. So um, this act really helps us in that process. So maybe um, maybe Gabe is tripped and uh, he spills his lunch and it goes everywhere all over the the girl that he he has interest in so this love interest okay so the whole school sees it everybody laughs and and then we immediately start to dislike asher but we start to feel emotionally connected to gabe and the protagonist okay so see how we didn't have to write that in we didn't have to say hey every please like gabe and please don't like asher this act this this act, this inciting incident helped us do that. And we don't even have to have dialogue. We don't even have to have Gabe saying, oh, please like me. And Asher, like you're, you know, please don't like me. No, this, this act of bullying does that for us. I probably spelled that wrong. Okay. So then what happens? Here, the contemplation. Here, the protagonist usually takes some time to contemplate their circumstances and the gravity of the road ahead. Poor me. Okay, so this is the poor me part that Gabe says. If only is a is a is a nice little thing. So um, kind of like I wish I was just stronger and better than Asher type of thing. Okay. And so, and a lot of times in some movies, that'll actually happen. Like you'll, someone will wish something and some, some weird electrical current combines with something you ate and that something, you know, and it's raining outside and there's a storm and then you get your wish type of thing, right? You get electric and, and you get this. So if only type of thing, okay? And then what happens is this guy, the turning point, And this is where Gabe, this is where we should have, written this originally gabe buys gum from vending machine and realizes that he sees the future every time he pops a bubble okay so that's usually and you we see this in theater too right girls when you uh um there's like an act one and an act two so this is where the story picks up and then we have an intermission like, oh my God, I, there's so much anticipation about the second act, okay? But if you notice, do you guys notice this? I was talking about this with um, my kids last night that in the second act, that there's so much more laughter at jokes and, and there's because the audience is now connected emotionally to the characters. So that first act was huge, and it's kind of like the almost a necessary evil. It's not evil, but you have to kind of get through it, and the jokes aren't going to land as nicely as the second act. Um, you could tell the same; they could be just as funny, but when you watch it in the first act, you're not emotionally connected to the characters yet, so they're not as funny. But once you get the second act, things start rolling right it's not like they're funnier people are funnier but it's just that they're they're connected to the audience that's huge so it's like that first act that character development is like something you have to get through but you know that jokes aren't going to land people aren't going to be emotionally connected yet so um when i when we lead worship at our church when we lead the music at our church um there's we always sing first two the two songs one or two songs in the middle in the beginning sorry and then we do announcements and then we have the sermon and then we sing some songs afterwards well those first two songs people are usually getting their bagel their coffee they're still talking to people they're not seated so we kind of we almost call those songs like well they're just crowd gatherers you know it's not like people it's not like the songs are gonna do any good type of thing well they do but um it, um, my daughter calls them get them going songs. So get them going, get their attention. And so this is kind of how we develop, um, develop that emotion, right? So, um, so Gabe buys vending, 
from guys buys gum sorry gum from vending and realizes he sees the future okay boom and then intermission or whatever so that's when act one ends and uh then we can get going so you can see that now we've got these we've got these these beats right that we can go through and now we can easily a little bit more easily write script and dialogue around okay gabe enters cafeteria scared as usual just because he knows he has to look out for asher so he's look he's, his friends have told him that it's clear asher is nowhere in sight so see how we can easy it's a lot easier to develop the story and the dialogue around this now that we have this beat sheet so what we're going to do guys make sure you vote make sure you vote before wednesday, wednesday night uh midnight if you have to vote if you are slacking and you need to vote during class just do it before you get to class then we'll look at the i'll tally the votes i'll, I'll go tally the votes a little jeff probes there okay and uh and we'll decide on a movie and something that we'll push, pursue together and then we'll start filling out this beat sheet sound good any questions okay all right i did a lot of talking so hopefully you're you don't you're not bored of me but that's it i'm gonna sign off and uh yeah we'll pick it up again on thursday you guys good all right questions did somebody say something okay all right so i'm leaving see, see you guys